this extremely special version of Breaking Stuff with Joe. And I say it's extremely special for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that for the first time since our very first Breaking Stuff with Joe video, the majority of people watching this have no idea who I am and no idea what Breaking Stuff with Joe is. And the reason for that is the second thing that makes this special, which is that we are casting from our brand new studio at the new Cyberary headquarters here in the Discovery District at UMD. And part of that means that we're going live on Facebook, Instagram, and a bunch of other social media sites that I've never heard of. Uh, but we're doing it everywhere we can so that everyone can see our awesome new studio and get an example of a Breaking Stuff with Joe video. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you don't know what Breaking Stuff with Joe is, if you've not seen our videos before, real quick summary, Breaking Stuff with Joe is an ongoing Cyberary series where three, or three to five times a week, I pick a hacking tool or a hacking technology or some security topic and I just talk about it for about 10 minutes so that everyone involved understands what it is, how it works, how they can use it in their day-to-day -day lives and can go forth to do some interesting cybersecurity stuff. Generally speaking, break things. That's the name of the series. So today we're gonna kinda do a special version of that as well. Instead of talking about a specific tool, instead of talking about a seam or you know, talking about uh, Armitage or any of the hacking tools, we're actually going to talk about one of the fundamental concepts of hacking and one of my favorite subjects to talk about, which is a very old paper written by ALF1 called Smashing the Stack for Fun and Profit. And I'm gonna show all of you, our largely not super technical audience here on Facebook and on Instagram, exactly what it is when a hacker is breaking a program and what's actually happening under the hood so that you can understand it a little bit better and maybe defend yourselves just a little bit. So the first thing we need to do when we talk about smashing the stack is understand what the stack is and why it's important. So when we talk about the stack, what that actually is is a data storage mechanism in your computer. What's happening is you have to be able to make use of tremendous amounts of data because your computer is doing an incredible number of things. Every program that's running has hundreds of under the hood variables, registers, pieces of data being tracked and stored and, and it's impossible for any, you know, for any structure to fully manage that unless it's a very simple, very, very fast structure. And so that's what the stack is for. So we're gonna draw the stack out here because one of the great things about our new studio is that we actually have a whiteboard and we have multiple cameras. For those of you who've been with Breaking Stuff with Joe since the beginning, you'll know that once upon a time it was done on my computer's webcam, we have upgraded. So, the stack. Every programmer's bane. Well, every security programmer's bane. The reason why we use a stack, as I said, the stack is just a data storage mechanism. The reason why we use a stack is because it's lightning fast. And the reason it's lightning fast is because of the way it stores data. So when you and I are writing on a grocery list, when we're storing data in a normal way, we're just trying to record some piece of information, often we'll write it as a list. We'll say, this is the first thing I need to do, this is the second thing I need to do, third, fourth, etc., until we've got all of the items on our list. But the thing is that when we read down that data line, we're only able to do that because we already have some a priori knowledge. We know what the first piece of data is way back in the distance, and so we're able to address from it, in our own, it with our list and our own minds. When your computer is working, it is storing so much data and it's doing it so quickly for so many different programs that know nothing about one another that it needs an easier way for that information to be retrieved. And it also has to understand that generally speaking, in a computer, data is more likely to be accessed sooner rather than later. Which is to say that when I put a piece of data on the stack and then I put another piece of data above it, it is more likely that I'm going to address this piece of data next than that I'm going to address this one. And the reasons for that are a whole bunch of computer science topics that frankly, you don't need to know and I don't have time to tell you, but the stack. So it's what we call a last in, first out structure. The last variable stored is the first one we're going to retrieve. So for example, if we have a variable here that we're going to call leaf and a variable above it called dead, and we do what's called a pop operation, pop means pop the top item off the stack, we're going to get that value out. So whatever we pop into, whatever variable, we're going to say storage A equals pop. And so the value of dead is going to get stored in this variable. So pretty straightforward, pretty understandable. Data gets stored. The last item in is the first item out. We now understand what the stack is used for. Cool. Why does that matter to hacking? Why does that not only matter, but actually enable some of the most complex and dangerous hacks in the world? The reason for that is because when I say that everything's stored on the stack, I mean just about everything is represented on the stack in some way. Now, sometimes it's just a memory address that leads to this bigger storage unit, but everything is on the stack in some way. And so what we're going to do to explain that is we're going to look at a function in programming. And we're gonna do it at a very high level because frankly, I'm already halfway through my time 
And honestly, it's, it takes a terribly long amount of time to explain functions. So in a short, simple summary, a function is just a unit of code that can be used over and over again. So for example, if I have a print function in C, that would be printf. Under the hood, this is doing hundreds and thousands and sometimes millions of operations that we know nothing about. This is going to get translated down to a system function. This is going to get translated down to some opcode. And on some, on some processors, that's actually going to get tra uh, transferred down to an even more simple series of instructions. We don't have to care about that. What we do need to understand is that with a function, as with pretty much anything, you need to have some input and some output. So your input to a print statement might be what you want it to print. In many cases, for example, for a new programmer, we're going to say print, hello, world. And you'd usually do it on one line, but I'm really bad at estimating the size of whiteboards and my handwriting sucks, but that's okay. So our input here is this string, hello world. And when we run this to our screen, it's going to print the string, hello world. But in the program, it's also going to give some values back and that's gonna be our actual output. In the case of printf, uh, if I'm remembering way back to my C programming days, it's gonna to return to us uh, the length of what was printed or how much was printed. So in this case, what we wanna look at with printf and what we wanna look at with functions in general to enable hacking is what's happening on our stack while all of this input and output is happening. So we're gonna get whatever our argument stored on the stack, in this case, hello world. And then, we're going to actually call the function. So what we're going to see under the hood, instead of just printf, we're going to push or store an item on the stack. Made it work that time. Nice. Makes me feel good. And then we're going to call that function. And calling a function is just invoking it, saying, hey, run that chunk of code that I stored in this address wherever printf is stored. So when we call that function, again, we're going to actually touch the stack. And we're going to store a bunch of stuff on the stack. But what's really important is we're going to store the address of this instruction. And that's called EIP, the instruction pointer. Now, this devastatingly complex, or devastatingly simple, rather, piece of code is what enables some of the most dangerous and complex hacks in the world. Because this is getting stored on the stack, and you have a bunch of your local variables, and you have your base pointer, and you have all sorts of other things that are stored on this, on this stack. That's the wrong order, not important. But underneath all of those is that value for EIP. Now, I will tell you, uh, because I know I can already hear it, even though I can't actually hear anybody, uh, we've got a very well soundproof studio. I can already hear my security friends in the background like, that's not how this works anymore. Don't worry. What's really cool about this hack is that fundamentally under the hood, rewriting this EIP and taking over is the same as it always was just with extra steps. So there's a ton of security in place now. We've got things called stack canaries. We have all this, not important. What's key to understand here is that all we wanna do is control, is control this instruction pointer and point it wherever we wanna go. And we would do that because we're going to say in our C code, we have this character string, which is a terrible name, but that's okay. And it's just equal to the letter A times a lot. And what happens is we want to store this on the stack. And if we don't give it enough space, this is where this hack comes in. Instead of just writing the four A's that it can store safely in a single item on the stack, it's going to say, well, I have a thousand of these I have to get on there. And it's just going to run down this list, blowing away everything else that's stored on the stack until eventually it gets to EIP. So the actual hack, the actual thing that's happening here is someone finds a, a variable that is not stored in a secure way on your stack. They go in and they give it a variable that in this case we'll just say character hack string equals some number of A's, and we'll say a thousand again, or 1024, because that's what hack what programmers write when they mean to write a thousand. And then at the end of that is our evil EIP. And this is what happens. We smash the stack, smashing the stack for fun and profit is the paper that made this famous. We smash the stack and we write down until we get to the saved EIP. Now remember that everything is making use of the stack. Everything is referencing this data. So once we've overwritten this with an evil EIP, an evil instruction pointer, the program has no idea. The operating system has no idea that we've done something terrible to the stack here. 
It's going to finish execution. It's going to use these A's as best it can. Sometimes it's going to break and we'll have to work around that. But it's going to finish the execution and it's going to come time to go back to whatever it was doing before this call. So there's going to be a bunch more code underneath this that's doing other functionality. It might be getting passwords. It might be unlocking systems. It might just be printing more junk out. Doesn't matter because we're never ever going to get to that. Because when the program comes back and it says, okay, where did I store my instruction pointer right here? We're going to store that. We're going to put that back in our functional EIP. And that's going to cause our instructions or our operations, our code execution to jump to wherever this evil EIP is. Now you can do anything with that. You might address an unlock function. You might go completely out of that program into you know, distant memory. You might have malicious code that you've loaded. All of the different ways that you can make use of this EIP takeover, there, there are hundreds, thousands even. What's key is that all of it is dependent on this simple data structure that is core to your computer's function and the only way you're able to store and retrieve this data quickly. So that in 10 minutes or less, a very brief version is smashing the stack for fun and profit. Now, obviously there's a lot more that goes into it and hacking is a massive field, but this is one of my absolute favorite topics to talk about because most of what we now think of as computer hacking or cybersecurity comes from this little bit of math and research. So that's going to be all there is for today's video. Uh, hopefully you got a lot out of it. It's been a lot of fun for me. We kind of did this at a breakneck pace. We get to show off our brand new studio here in College Park. Uh, but this is Breaking Stuff with Joe. And if you're interested in this sort of just lightning quick explanation of different topics in cybersecurity, different tools that you might use, and just all the different ways you can build a career in cybersecurity and IT, I'm going to recommend you go to cybrary.it and you check out my series, Breaking Stuff with Joe. That's going to be everything for today. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.